Welcome back to Air on Your Hero. And I want to talk about Ten Commandments. So, when I was in Sunday school, when I went to church, I learned about Ten Commandments. Okay? Now, during this time, I was also being abused a lot by Christians. A lot. For ten years. About four days a week, five days a week. Now, today I had a problem uh, dealing with that memory with the abuse that they've done because I was at work yesterday and I found a whip. I asked my, uh, as you could say, manager, boss, what is this? I, and he said, it's a whip. And then he told me to turn around and then he decided to hit me with that so-called whip that he said was a whip three times and thought he was joking didn't hurt or anything but that brought on uh, then he decided to tell me that it is a snake belt well that brought on some memories to the point where I had to call the crisis hotline today and I didn't go in for work it also made me remember the Ten Commandments Back when I used to be really upset, you know, the why God's doing this and that in the Bible. Or is it he supposed to be following Ten Commandments? Aren't we all supposed to be following Ten Commandments? Why are these Christians doing this and that? And I'm going to show you the real reason that I didn't know until I got out of Christianity when by the age I was 27. I didn't get out of that abuse until I was like 17. So, like 17 and a half or something like that. So, um, I'm going to start. Here it is. Here we are. Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet. Okay? Now, why I'm on here? Because on Facebook, on YouTube, okay, people jump you in the comments when you say you're not a Christian, blah, 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 blah. And a whole bunch of Christians agree with other Christians despite whether they're Baptist or Methodist or whatever else they are. They just agree with each other. So, I'm on here instead of the actual Bible because we all know this. Okay, we all hear about this. And the reason is because of this right here. A couple weeks ago, I posted lessons from our Sunday school class on Moses. That was so, that was well received. I thought you might also benefit from our discussion of the Ten Commandments, which were collected by Moses on Mount Sinai, also called the Decalogue. These laws are unique for how comprehensive and brief they are. These laws are requirements, not goals, and are mandates for now as much as they were for then. Anyway, they are never obsolete and are always relevant. We laughed that they are also not multiple choice. Think of them as rules of happiness. So, when I was being abused by the Christian people, I thought they had to follow this, this stuff. Don't steal, don't murder. You know, I thought they were supposed to be nice to me. And, uh, But, you know, I don't see anything in here about, you know, just don't give any false testimony against your neighbor. I was told in church I was being supposed to be nice to your neighbor, supposed to be nice to people. But, then we go to the actual thing here. Okay? The actual thing. Which... We don't need a new international version because that's not what we, that's not what people go by. That's not what my church went by. Okay. We have to go to, as you see me, you ready to click it. It was going to be the authorized King James version. Let's start. Let's hear what, it, what really happened. So, Exodus 34, 1 to 27. Let's read it. And the Lord said unto Moses, He the two tablets of stone like unto the first 
and I will write upon these tablets the words that were in the first tablets which thou breakest. So remember, the first time Moses had the tablets, he broke them. He basically broke the law. The first time he had them tablets, he came down and broke them. Okay? So we didn't get to hear what was on those tablets. We just heard this. We didn't get to hear what was on the tablets. So now let's get to now let's go ahead and let's hear what was on the tablets. So I went and be ready in the morning and came up in the morning onto Mount Sinai and present thyself there to me on top of the mount. And no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount, neither let the, the flocks nor herds feed before that mount. So and he hewed two tablets of stone like unto the first, and Moses rose up early in the morning, went up on the Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took his hand, two tablets of stone, and the Lord descended in the cloud, and stood him, stood with him there, and proclaimed the name of the Lord, and the Lord passed by before him, and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord, God, merciful, gracious, long suffering, abundant, and goodness and truth, and they say all this, yes, yes, all this stuff. Keep being mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin, that by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children, onto the third, the fourth generation, and Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped, and he said, If now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go amongst us, for it is a stiffened necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for thy inheritance. All oh, that's the reverent stuff. Okay. So, let's start reading them, okay? Okay, so, the commandment part, it was on the stone tablets. We're gonna keep, we're just gonna keep going until we get all the way to the bottom, okay? And he said, behold, I make a covenant before all thy people I will do marvel, such as I have not been not such as have not been done in all the earth nor in any nation and all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord for it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee why would that be why would it be a terrible thing that he's going to do he's supposed to be all loving observe thou I mean they just said all that wonderful stuff about him so he means a terrible thing that he's going to do with thee. Observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before thee the Amorite, and the Canaanite, and Hittite, Pesicite, and Hivite, and Jebusite. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. But ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, cut down their groves. For thou shalt worship no other god, and for the Lord whose name is Jealous. Is a jealous God. Well, that's interesting. That he's supposed to be all loving. I thought they just said all that nice stuff up here about him. So what's he doing being a jealous God? If there's no other God other than him, why is he jealous for? If he is the one who made all the other gods. Let's just keep going. At least thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and thy go whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods. And one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice, and thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and thy daughters go a whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go a whoring after their gods. So here we go. Here it is. Thou shalt make thee no molten gods. The feast of unleavened bread shalt thou keep seven days thou shalt eat unleavened breads as I command thee in the time of the month Abed for in the month of Abib thou comest out from Egypt all that openeth the matrix is mine and every firstling among thy cattle whether ox or sheep that is made but the firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with the lamb and if thou redeem him not then shalt break his neck all the firstborn of thy sons thou shalt redeem, and none shall appear before me empty. Six days thou shalt work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest. In earing time and in harvest thou shalt rest, and thou shalt observe the feast of weeks. Of the first fruits of wheat harvest 
and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Thrice in the year shall all your men children appear before the Lord God and God of Israel. For I will cast out the nations before thee and enlarge thy borders. Neither shall my men desire thy land. When thou shalt go up to appear before thy Lord, thy God, thrice in the year, thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice in leaven, neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover be left unto the morning. The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord by thy God. Thou shalt not seethe a kid in his mother's milk. So go. Like baby goat in his mother's milk. Okay? And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words. After the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And what were these? And the Lord said unto Moses, Heed thee two tablets of stone like unto the first, and I will write upon these tablets the words that were in the first tablets, which thou breaketh. Which was not this. It was not this. Was it? Nothing in there not about not murdering somebody. Nothing in there about not stealing. Nothing in there about not committing adultery. Nothing in there about honoring your mother and your father. Nothing. What about false testimony against your neighbor? <clears throat> what about being nice to people? What about loving people? The whole love thy neighbor and all that extra stuff. Where is the love? That's why. This is the reason why, no matter how much I pray, about all the abuse I was going through, why I kept seeing that evil ass crap that God was doing in the Bible to other people. And it wasn't Satan. It was God doing it. Because he never said, and for real, he never said that. That he wouldn't do those things. He never put that in the Ten Commandments that he wouldn't be, be nice to people or that he was going to be loving people. He ne it's not in here. In the actual stuff that he wrote, that he the two tablets of stone like unto the first, and I will write upon these tablets, the words that was in the first tablet was thou breakest. The first time that we actually didn't get the Ten Commandments that was on the tablets, but we got these verbal, verbally. God didn't say this. God said this. This stuff. And that's why the prayers didn't work. That's why. Because according to God, these commandments here are so important he wrote them in stone. These are the ones. Nothing in there about loving somebody. Nothing in there about being nice to your neighbor. Nothing in there about not stealing. That's why he could tell people, go steal this land. Go take that land. Go murder these people. What? That's why he doesn't have to adhere to this stuff right here. Don't murder, but then they're whispering a golden castle. So go murder them. Don't commit adultery, but I'm going to go ahead and give Lot all your different wives. And he's going to have all these, and sleep with all these other people's wives. Don't steal, but go ahead and go take this stuff. Go take these people's uh, houses and stuff like that if you want to go take their land. Go do that. Honor your mother and father, but then he's got some messed up, messed up stuff where he said that Sons will hate their sons will hate their mothers and fathers and, and then daughters will hate their mothers. And he'll make them do that. That's why these don't count. Understand? Because he never said that. This is what he said. What I just read to you. This is what was on the tablets. So if you were like me and you're wondering why your prayers aren't being answered, if you're wondering why. Why would God do those things if those was in the Ten Commandments? Because these are not the Ten Commandments. He did not say this. He didn't write this in stone. This is what was written in stone. So if I were you, if you're being abused, if you're being raped, 
if you're doing it, if the Christians are doing any of the same stuff that they did to me in my videos that they're doing to you now, just the best thing you can do is just stop being a Christian right now. Because none of the stuff they're saying is true. What the guy really feels is this stuff. That's how he feels. Okay? That's how I really feel. Wondering, you're wondering, you're reading the Bible for yourself. You're thinking, like I was thinking, oh, I'm not a true Christian. It's probably because I haven't read the whole Bible for myself. And then you get through Leviticus and you get through all these other books. And then this is what you get to. This. It's messed up. Isn't it? Why don't they show this? Maybe because people will give up. I don't know. But I just want y'all to know what God really think. What he really wrote on them freaking tablets. Why your prayers aren't being answered. Why God's actually doing this horrible crap that he said that, that, he, that you thought. You thought he wouldn't do to you. You thought. Like why would God, send, why would God say, those, say those verses? About putting your about putting your your sons against daughters and putting your daughters against mothers and and sons against fathers why God sending people to murder people why God giving people other people's wives instead of just instead of just making them wives and giving them to them why would he give him other people's wives and have them commit adultery why God sending people to steal people's land why he doing that I mean, that's why. This is why. Because he never said that in the first place. Okay? So if you want to get out of Christianity, you want to leave, you're tired of being beat. You're tired of being raped. You're tired of being molested. You're tired of this shit. You're tired of them wearing crosses and having Bibles in their hands while they're doing this stuff. While they're sitting here telling you, well, God said I could do it. And you're thinking this. Well, oh, God said you can't do this stuff to me. God said you can never be able to do this stuff to me. But really, he ain't never said that. Did he? After what we just read. God, I never say that. Did he? So the worst thing, the worst part of it is, is that your enemy's actually right. All those different portions in the Bible that they're reading to you. All those different things about what's happening with the pedophilia and all that stuff that's going on. Yep. They're right and actually you're wrong. And that's what sucks the most. Is that the evil people that's doing stuff to you. That's a, that supposedly, as they always say about everybody else, masquerading themselves as beings of light is actually doing that to you. And they're masquerading themselves as beings of light and they're not. Unless beings of light aren't as good as we think they are. It sounds stupid to say that after all the movies portray that beings of light are supposed to be angels and supposed to be great. But if they're supposed to be great, if God can send the angel, it's one of my worst things. If God could send an angel to destroy a whole city. How come he couldn't send one to deal with my abusers for the last 10 years? Or to deal with my sister, or to deal with the people, to deal with my sister's abusers, and the people that, that did that stuff to her, the rape and the molestation that did happen to me and her. Especially when I prayed for a whole hour, and he couldn't send the angel to do that, but he could send the angel to destroy the whole city to the point where he found himself saying, oh, this is evil. Did he have to repent of himself? So, I just want y'all to think about that, and I just want y'all to realize that if you don't want to be a Christian anymore, you're tired of getting beat, tired of the rape, you're tired of all that stuff, you're tired of your prayers not working, you can just get out. Alright, I want to thank y'all for uh, watching.